let's play this clip just to remind people of just like, you know, what we're seeing here. You know, Donald Trump wears the mask, but the, the damage is done. I mean, let's be honest. Um, the, the You're going to have multiple states in the country that are going to have to go through um, a horrific event until they adopt mask wearing. And at least in the Southwest, you have a situation where maybe they will start wearing masks. Maybe uh, people will start to social distance more. And then we'll get into the fall. Things will cool off in terms of temperatures. They won't be inside as much. They will stay outside through much of the winter, and they can in these areas. Uh, and we're going to probably suffer the opposite, I would imagine, in the Northeast to some extent. People are going to start getting cocky. They're going to be used to going out and socializing, even though it's going to be outside. And then we're going to get into the, um, the fall and the winter months. Maybe um, school adds part of this problem. And then we're going to be in a problematic situation again. All of this is to say that what we need is a government response, a federal government response, because concurrent with all these things happening in the fall, we will also be in the midst of a massive economic recession or depression. There's a certain inevitability right now. And it, it, it just, you know, again, we're still, I feel like we're still in some type of like state of shock where everybody's just assuming it's not going to be a problem. But remember, evictions start uh, shortly, moratoriums start running out, the Paycheck Protection Program. All of that funding basically ends in the within a couple a couple of weeks and we're going to have this is the other thing that is not being reported very much you can find it the uh clos you remember cdos right that was those uh collateral um what what do the cdos stand for the uh the derivatives um like the CLOs are basically the same thing, but they're commercial loans. And um, these commercial loans, many of them were already scheduled to reset late 2020 and early 2021. And they're going to reset at higher interest rates. And uh, there's going to be less cash to pay them off. We're going to have some real problems, folks. Uh, meanwhile, let's just look back for a moment. It being now uh, mid-July, which I believe is like, um, when is Memorial Day? That's uh, late May, correct? Yes, it was a while ago. So that was like uh, almost six weeks ago. Let's tune in with the uh, godly Mike Pence as to his uh, divine sense of where things were going. This is back in April. Vice, Pre uh, Pence, uh, Vice President Pence is telling Geraldo Rivero his sense of where we're headed in terms of the coronavirus. This was um, the CNN K file found this. Do you think I'll be on my boat and fishing in early June, uh, Mr. Vice President? I, I think, uh, honestly, if you look at the trends today, uh, that I think by Memorial Day weekend, we will largely have uh, this uh, coronavirus epidemic behind us. Uh, well, and your lips uh, to God's and ears, state Mr. and local President. officials will begin to reopen activities. You're going to see you're going to see states in the days ahead here begin to do that. But the key for President Trump, for all of us, is we want to do it in a safe and responsible way. We don't want a resurgence. Uh, and we think that uh, the key to that is the phased approach the president outlined to the nation and to the governors uh, last week. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. In fact, let's listen to um, uh, Brett Giroir. He is the uh, COVID task force test czar. Is he? I think he was the former test czar because I don't think he no longer has that position. I think he's just now uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services, I believe, um, because they they basically decided we don't need a testing czar because we're not going to help with the testing anyways. <laughs> and so, so here he is on ABC this week 
Um, this is six weeks after uh, Vice President Pence said, we're basically going to roll this thing up. Uh, six weeks after the time that Vice President Pence said it would be rolled up. Those positivity levels in the hot states are, are leveling off at a very high level, a significantly high level. That means we're likely to see the death rate increase even more over the next few weeks, doesn't it? Um, so, look, that's a leading indicator. We expect hospitalizations to continue to go up. What I mean a leading indicator, that's the first thing you see. Um, and when it levels off, it's got to level off before it goes down. We do expect and are planning for and are surging people and everything else. But we do expect hospitalizations to go up. At the peak in April, we were at about 85,000. Right now, we're at 63,000. But we do expect those to go up. And unfortunately, even though the mortality rate, your chances of dying if you get COVID are way reduced than they were before because we know how to care for you better. We have remdesivir, we have steroids. Even though the death rate, if you get it, is going down, your chances of surviving are much better, we do expect deaths to go up. If you have more cases, more hospitalizations, we do expect to see that over the next two or three weeks before this turns around. It's starting to turn now, but we won't reap the benefits of that for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Someone tell the vice president. It, I mean, this is going to go down in history as the as as one of the sort of greatest um, self owns. I don't know how else to articulate this. Well, but, I w- I often think of it how I remember learning about the Dust Bowl and stuff like that, and basically just complete government failure until we just had to figure out how we to irrigate land better. Uh, and this just feels like something, yeah, it would be, I mean, probably wiped out of the history books after 40 years, but for those first 40 years, it's going to be a very good lesson for kids. That's right. And then we'll forget it all over again. Yep.